say hi. Hey everyone, I'm Sarah Bell Reed. Welcome back to another video. So today I have some super, super exciting news, which is I have a new album <laughs> that's being released today. Hooray! This record, which is called Nows, is a collaborative project between myself and composer-performer David Rosenboom. It features music for electric violin, quarter-tone flugelhorn, a uh, buchla modular synthesizer, <laughs> household objects like pots and pans, field recordings, Maximus P, feedback-based circuits, Eurorack modular synths, and a whole lot of other sound making devices. To celebrate the release of Nows, we have a limited run of physical CD copies available, and a hundred of them have been autographed by both myself and David. So if you want to pick up a copy for yourself, you can go to our Bandcamp page. I will leave a link to that in the description below this video. So David and I met a handful of years ago at California Institute of the Arts, and we bonded over our mutual fascination with things like time and temporal perception experimental sound, improvisation, modular synthesizers, and graphic notation, we started to talk about the possibility of collaborating with one another and what it might look like to create an album together. And now, after about two years of working together on this project, we are super, super excited to get to share it with you today. So for this video today, I thought it could be fun to bring David in so that the two of us could chat a little bit more about this project and share with you a little bit more about how it was made. So I've got David here on Zoom, ready to go. Hey, David, how's it going? Hi, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say, first of all, thank you so much for making this album with me <laughs> oh. and for collaborating. Honestly, it has been so much fun working with you on this for the last year and a half likewise for me too thank you for doing it with me and thanks yeah. for suggesting the process when we suddenly had to go uh remote right i'm so happy that you were that you were down to do it and here we are and it's we get to share it with the world which is super exciting so it's congrats fantastic. <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm curious to hear from you i know that we've talked a lot obviously about what this project means to us as it has unfolded mm -hmm. right um but I would love to hear from you, from your perspective, what this has been about. Well, first of all, of course, we have a history of talking about all kinds of things, time and space and music and notation and all kinds of uh, approaches to sound as raw sound and everything. And we've worked on uh, pieces and performances together. So that was was great. And um, then we started, um, you know, beginning sort of doing ex uh, duet experiments where we were, we were playing and, and did some performances that way, which I thought were very successful. And so it then came the idea that maybe we should record some duet. And when I say duet, it's not like somebody composes a duet and we play the duet. It's, I mean, kind of we did that when we began. You know, we gave each other... Uh, scores or <clears throat> diagrams or things like that, and then as, as a guide, and then and then um, uh, you know we would we would improvise as well. So the idea of doing a duo recording was already in the air when we when suddenly we had to go remote, and then um, then I believe you made the suggestion that we try to do something remote by sharing sounds with each other. So. Uh, having you know had a lot of conversation about time and all of that sort of stuff, uh, it felt very natural. So I thought, great, this is a this is a great idea. Let's see what happens. The sharing process led to something where it felt to me like all the communication was really in sound, because we we didn't really we didn't really meet much or talk with each other. No, as, in fact, at I the beginning. Think... I'm pretty sure, didn't we say that we didn't want to talk too much? <laughs> yes, I think we <laughs> like, did, actually. <laughs> we intentionally didn't want to plan very much or right. micromanage what each other was going to do. And, and we uh, 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 just started sharing sound. And, yeah. and uh, also, it was your suggestion we could share, we could share pictures or diagrams or whatever. Uh, and we did a little bit of that. Um, but mostly it was a, a, a communication entirely in sound. And that's really, really interesting and really 
amazing. I think a really big part of that for me that was really powerful um, was actually the schedule. <laughs> that might right. sound really funny to say, <laughs> but but what we did was we had a set day. We did we each had a our own set day and time right. every single week, and it actually wasn't wasn't much longer than an hour or two um, every week because we kept putting this off like oh we need a day in the studio or wouldn't it be nice to have like three weeks to right. compose together and then we weren't getting that and so we said okay we're gonna have we're gonna do one hour a week that's all we can get and we're just gonna do that for six months straight mm -hmm. and every single week we're each relying on the other person to deliver something it could be some words some audio a picture, some combination of those things. It allowed me to listen in a certain way as though we were together in the room um, making music at the same time because I knew yeah. that you were also doing the same thing. Even though I couldn't see you or hear you, we weren't, there was no connection online so that you could see what I was doing in my studio. Just the fact that I knew you were also setting aside that time mm -hmm. to create for this project kind of opened my imagination in a slightly yeah. new way. And I could, yeah. as I was improvising, I felt like I was, you know, I wanted to leave space for you in those mm -hmm. improvisations because mm -hmm. I could kind of imagine what you might do in the future. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, cool. Yeah, absolutely. And I was doing the same thing. Um, so that's, that was really amazing. And, and we were able to just let it emerge and just not get in the way of it. You know? So we collected and tr and kind of swapped files back and forth for about six months. And then at that point, we, we took stock of everything we had, which was a lot. And we started to piece different things together into the tracks that emerged for the album, taking pages and pages of notes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and just sort of looking at how different themes were emerging and kind of where we could go from there. Right. And uh, you mentioned notes, and that's true. You know, we both had notebooks. And and occasionally we would uh, scan them and, and uh, send pages that would say listening notes or something like that about about particular tracks. And, and it would be collections of words, not narrative, but, collect, you know, that we associated with listening to something. And I, I think then a certain kind of themes began to show themselves that we, you know, things that had to do with sort of sound architecture, things that had to do with sort of nature inspired things, things that had to do with um, stellar mm -hmm. bands, <laughs> right? <laughs> interstellar <remember> bands, interstellar. <laughs> right. And um, things like that. Then we began to connect those ideas in which led to some kind of grouping um, and uh, I, I remember drawing lines, you know, con connecting different tracks and listening notes and so on. And then this, this sort of structure starts to emerge. Yeah. Something that I really loved the whole time for me was that it just felt really um, kind of playful, like uh, the way that, a, you know, a kid might feel just getting all of their favorite toys out of the cupboard and putting them all over the floor and just being <laughs> like, okay, I'm going to build something crazy. You know, I don't yeah. know what it's going to be. I don't know how it's going to work, especially given the time, like in the pandemic, the everything was remote, all of those challenges. It, I felt like this was a really just very fun, playful, experimental, and kind of carefree way to communicate with you and kind of like get through yeah. that time period <laughs> yeah so yeah. I want to say thanks for that too because it was it was really nice to be able to work with someone who was like right there like oh yeah you're going and grabbing your random you know the pots and pans from your kitchen okay I see that and I'll go grab <laughs> my um you know something that's hanging on my wall and I'll use that yeah. as an instrument speaking of that actually how did you how were you thinking about the instruments? There were a lot of instruments used. Yeah, really a lot of <laughs> instruments. Yeah, and some that you might not think were instruments, like tuning forks. I use tuning forks. Cool. And, and I use them to activate sound in my electronic system. So so you might hear, and so it might be just sort of the envelope of the, of, you know, the shape of the bringing it close to the mic in a way and so on. And it would, you know, that, that was a way of playing the electronics, whether you heard actually heard the, 
tuning fork in, in the sound or not. Uh, there was a lot of trumpet running into the bukla <laughs> on my side of things. Yeah. Um, Especially in the first track of the album, I remember that was sort of the technique that I was playing with for that. Um, you know, envelope followers are like my favorite. They are the un unsung hero of modular synthesizers. Right, I love right. them so much. Right. Running the flugelhorn into the envelope follower using, you know, setting a threshold so that uh, I could determine, you know, have the synth output gates at different levels of intensity of my playing that I could then use to trigger different things in the synth. That that was a big part of how that came together. Yeah. I also remember yeah. there was one track, and I don't remember where this ended up, where I started, I heard something you were doing on your violin um, that was just really beautiful, kind of these longer ghost-like longer tones and I think and I I don't know if you were actually bowing a violin you might have been bowing something else but I went and grabbed a bow an old bow that I had in my closet and I started running around my studio in my house bowing everything that I could make a sound on <laughs> garbage cans pots and pans yeah. you know guitars lamps uh, and running that into actually a synth that was running in VCV rack on my computer I was granularizing and processing one of your tracks, David, that you sent. Mm -hmm. And I was using the input from the bow to actually modulate and kind of impact how that granular sampler was going to kind of scramble your sound. Mm -hmm. So it was mm -hmm. a really similar thing. And it's funny because we didn't talk about any of that. That's right. So That's we had right. a very similar approach. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but and it wasn't I'm just, planned. You, were, you were talking about envelopes. Um, I've always thought uh, in in electronic, uh, making electronic music with modular synthesizers especially, uh, that the really mastering the nuance of envelopes is the key to making really good work with, with the synthesizers mm -hmm. <clears throat> and modules. And so envelopes are the big, big, big deal. And yes, I'm into envelope followers <laughs> too. <laughs> <laughs> I have... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, actually, in in uh, five modules because I have a I have a, a triple envelope follower in a, a Buchla module, mm -hmm. and then I've got four in a in a Euro, small Euro rack setup. I'm pointing to it. It's over there. Yeah. Um, that I use to extract you know, do sort of spectral decomposition. I was just no about way. to ask if you were doing any spectral decoding with the violin. Absolutely. Um, so I, I um, decode it into, with the modules, I'm, I'm decoding it into about four bands so that I can move, you know, move around. I have software-based uh, decomposers too that can do up maybe 12 bands, things like that. Of course, you can do that kind of thing in software, but I, I tended to mostly use these analog ones because of the way you can push them around. I would sometimes use uh, resonant filters in the uh, 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 my Buchla set, which is also a small set, and then and divide things up, and then maybe that goes into something else and it gets further divided up, so parsed out. So yes, I did a lot of that spectral decomposition. One um, approach also that I found very interesting, uh, especially with some of the um, things that I extracted from some field recordings, which was to activate electronics. Let's say there's one, there's a place where there's a recording of a fire, of a bonfire. And I, I took that recording and I, I um, parsed it out spectrally and tried to capture peaks with triggering, you know, setting triggers, peaks of particular frequency bands have that uh, uh, trigger electronic sound and then take the field recording away. And so what's mm -hmm. left is the shape of that articulated electronically uh, and the, and the, the, uh, the natural sound, I keep saying natural, all sound is natural, but the, 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 what I got, took from the field recording um, I used it to get a sh to get a beautiful envelope to get nice you know shapes yeah. and then let those shapes control something else. That was a that was a technique that I 
That's a really I found fun. That's a beautiful idea. You you have like the imprint of this fire, mm-hmm. kind of creating or unmasking or creating shape for another right. sound. Yeah, that's right. really nice. Right, right. Because we weren't planning and and you know we didn't want to say okay we're going to play in this key or even on these instruments or in this way we really wanted to leave everything open. I was particularly interested in seeing how I could take that kind of spirit to the max for myself. So something that I did a lot was blindly patching, uh, both on my synth. And by blind, I just mean like I wasn't listening to it as I was patching. Uh, and I was working with a lot of feedback um, on the Buchla, on the you know No Input Mixer, um, a couple other instruments. And what I would do is just create a really gnarly <laughs> feedback web where you've basically lost any chance of having, you know, direct control where you turn the what's supposed to be the pitch knob and, you know, instead of the pitch changing, about 15 other things happen <laughs> that are like crackles and sputters and all kinds of crazy things. And I would set those types of worlds up um, without really listening to them as I went so that when I was pushing record, I was also hearing everything for the very first time. So I was really I was really interested in capturing that kind of, you know, that deep listening that comes with uh, improvising, of course, but also comes with hearing and getting to know your instrument in real time, kind of as it's making its sounds for the first time, you're hearing them for the first time. And, and that was what got recorded right. uh, in a lot of the stuff that I sent over to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I'm also very interested, as you know, in uh, um, unstable circuits. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, uh, systems like that that have um, unpredictable behavior. And as you say, you have to get to know it. And you're dealing with something that feels very organic because, you know, you you push it here, you change it there, and then it behaves in a certain way that takes you into something uh, that you might not have expected, and, and then you interact with that, and you know it goes where it goes. That's that's a, a particular type of instrument that I'm very, mm-hmm. you know, I'm very interested, also, uh, in working with it. And it kind I, of seems like our whole project was sort of an unstable circuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's a good analogy. Yeah, it's mm. like yeah. So it's not like a deterministic instrument where where like a piano, you press a key and you're going to get that. You're going to get yeah. what that string does. Now you can you can turn a piano into a beautiful thing as well, but it's a whole different approach to what is an instrument. And right. uh, so, you know, I used to sometimes make the joke, you know, that that every time I press the F key on the piano, I get an F. What good is that? <laughs> <laughs> No, you know. That's funny. Yeah, well, I think, you know, again, it just kind of speaks to the the playfulness from from my perspective anyway of like what does this what what can this do? You know, what are all of the ways that our instruments can be different than we think they are? You know, like how can we approach them differently every single time? we approach them and things like that. And those are the kinds of questions that I get really excited thinking about. And I think this entire creation process behind this record was like a really nice playground for digging into those kinds of questions because an instrument could be literally anything and it could change as you play it. And often they did, right? Mm -hmm. Right, Um, right. And it also really brought up the question of, you know, what, what a collaboration can look like and yeah. what an album yeah. can be <laughs> and all of these things, which was, you know, really, really fun. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. And I, I think, you know, now as I listen to it again and again, uh, there are certain kind of non-linguistic narratives that emerge in some of it, some of it, you know, which I think you can, you can, you can overlay or imagine even some kind of commentary on the world coming out of this of the of the material, which was really uh, really gratifying. Uh, not not that you would ever write it down, you know, but it and nor did it start out as an intention to to make a, a certain kind of narrative. But some but some things kind of emerged that were they're very touching. They're very beautiful in the way they unfold. 
Well, early on, we labeled our our folder correspondences. Right. 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 So that's kind of how we were thinking about what we were doing. We just sort of approached it as a sonic correspondence. Sonic, right. I mean, sonic as in, in sound, like not right. verbal. Um, but it makes sense that those stories and that kind of narrative would naturally start to emerge because mm-hmm. it was like just six, 12, 18 months of us yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just talking to one another in this way and living our lives and kind of bringing in whatever is happening in the world into our, mu- our playing in that day. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. and the energy kind of, of, of how we were working with the sound in that day. So, right. yeah, that's right. So is there anything else that you feel like you want to share? Well, I would say I'm gratified by the fact that this conversation <laughs> emerged just like the music. <laughs> <laughs> we, yeah, me too. And that's really wonderful. Uh, so thank you for engaging in this and for setting up. Yeah this video and and um, and more to come yeah absolutely much more to come well thank you so much David for you know being such a wonderful friend and collaborator and willing to hop on and chat thank you Sarah it's very meaningful okay so this album was so much fun to put together and David and I are both really really excited to share it with you just a reminder that if you want to pick up a copy for yourself You can do that by going to our Bandcamp page. There's a link in the description of this video. And we have 100 copies that have been autographed by both David and myself. So if you want to get one of those while they are available, you can click that link to grab a copy. If you're interested in getting even deeper into the making of this project and some of the patches and the ideas that went into it, there is an extended cut of this interview that is available on my Patreon page, which is patreon.com slash Sarah Bellreed. And I want to say thank you to everyone in my Patreon community for, first of all, being awesome, and second of all, for supporting projects like this one. Creative work like this wouldn't be possible without people like you. So really, thank you for being part of that community. It really means a lot to me. All right, so that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching and for listening, and I'll see you next time. I think we did it.